back, powered by Omen and HyperX. Show us a Yone ban for the first time this series. Please. Will it be here? So some key ones are going to be up regardless. I mean, Rumble not banned, Zig's not banned, Yone not banned. You know, so some big oh. ones, and they're leaving it open again. It's going to be another first pick, pretty much guaranteed. And uh, yeah. they, they didn't even waste be... time. They didn't even waste time oh. covering. There's... I mean, it's just so strong. It just kind of wins every single time, man. I think it's absolutely crazy. I don't think that the, the series has really been about the Yone, but I just think this champ is ridiculous. Uh, but there is Aurora available. That's another one of the OPs that hasn't really been banned out. So we'll see what Gam can get as far as the trade. Yeah, I feel like it's going to be the Vi more than likely here for Levi. Just a very strong pick that now that you already got that AP option could be taken away. But we've also seen things like the Maokai with this Aurora as well because it just offers you so much knockdown. But yeah, I think the Vi just even taking that away from Ayoi is so nice here. I also just don't like Levi on Maokai compared to something that has more brawling potential, right? Yeah. Like, I would much rather see this. Now that is a Levi champion. I brought it up earlier. <laughs> the most famous game moment, the most famous Levi moment from all those years ago, the Nocturne performance. Absolutely. I mean, they're again, they're, they just want to play dive, right? You know, you're going to be looking with this Aurora to be able to set up pick. If you have more AOE champions, more dive champions piling in, the Aurora can begin the pick. The Nocturne can fly in. And I think back to the play-in stage where we saw some monster games uh, from Kiaya on the Aurora. Their first series that they played, they played back-to-back -back Aurora games and he was smurfing with some of the strongest Aurora games we've actually seen at the event so far. And we're going to have to see if Mirren has an answer for it because you imagine it is still going up towards that top side. Obviously, can be flexed. We've seen in the mid lane. Rumble. But yeah, Rumble like, could just be the answer. Rumble is your first three. is so strong. It's weaker in the lane, so he's going to go oh. for the stronger 1v1 matchup with the Gnar. Um, but still, I mean, Sejuani, Yone is such a strong 2v2 pairing uh, that I feel like there's very little way Gamma are going to be able to kind of find their way in in a 2v2. Well, we're going to get to see the opposite side of the previous game's matchup. I always enjoy when we get these types of things because it really does let a guy show that he has mastery of the matchup. If you can play it both ways, if you can win it both ways. Last time around, even though they lost for Scowie, he ended up having a very impressive performance on the Ari against the Yone. He absolutely did, but we also have to remember it was a Yoyo that set him up on the Vi with that early gank. That was where they got that first kill. He got him in behind, and it's that combo that I think is so powerful. So far in the first three, there's zero setup for that charm, right? You know, the Vi plus Ari combo is so strong because it guarantees the CC and the full combo lands. And that's why I'm wondering if there's going to be something like a Jin here, just to try and get that slow set up for some of these plays to start happening but I do agree I think you're in a bit of an awkward spot here where you need something to follow up here for Elio to really get things started especially with Rel already gone I imagine something like the Leona or other in big engage support taken off the board exactly that's what I'm expecting double engage ban from MDK the Rel you already mentioned has come through first Gam are going to ban out the Ash first for themselves in this second half. Ezreal also going to continue to be banned away as one of those safe long range AD carries. And that's the thing, especially when you're trying to play dive with this Nocturne, having something that can peel for themselves is going to be a bit of a nightmare. Super may just go back towards the Zaya in that regard, just to say, hey, look, I'm going to be safe. Open up for Alvaro to go towards the Rakan, and then you can still play for this heavy dive function with so many frontliners to provide that engaged setup for the Rakan. Yeah, it is interesting because it, there's not like super easy to kill champs over on the MDK side yet. And you are very front loaded in your damage over on the cam team, right? Because of three burst champions on your top side, very low sustained DPS. You're going to go Callista. So uh, they are really overloading, I feel like, on the early game here. And just depending on the fact that they're going to be able to dominate lanes, create advantages. But MDK can just lane swap. Well, I was going to say, do you also try and take away something like the Renata here, mm. potentially? Like, just go, hey, look, we've already got enough dive in the top half of the map. We don't really need more. And maybe you just look for the takeaway, but not something I traditionally think of with the Kai'Sa, but could still work out very well in the, hey, I can just plunk that bailout on you as you shotgun yourself into the back line. It is true, but at the same time, I don't think that there's enough melee champions to really warrant yeah, the, the Renata coming out because it's like, yeah, there is a lot of dive, but it's Aurora, but it's Ari, you know, champions that still have a little bit of range, that have quite, quite a bit of mobility. So, you know, I don't think that it would be the best pick on their side. I actually feel like, if anything, uh, Renata is definitely stronger for Gam. So it will be interesting to see if they do go that route. But then you are very low on setup. You have basically zero hard engage. So I do think knowing Gam's style, we're just going to get a hard engage champion. We're going to get like a Leona or an Alistar or something along those lines. Braum, it's honestly kind of shocking to me. Yeah. I think that I've seen 
some yeah. comps. So like if you look at Gen G and stuff where they've already operated with essentially what the GAM top side has been, which is, hey, I'm just going to play very heavily for a pick and prod style, or sorry, pick and poke style with this uh, Aurora ult into the Nocturne ult, the follow-up from the Ari as well. So I think even though you lack some engage, you can get a surprising amount done with these three champions on the top half of the map for GAM. Yeah, I mean, I agree. They, ha they have pretty good pick, but at the same time, it's like, I don't know. I, I just think that there, there's no really kind of point and click CC. There's no instant go button, I guess, besides just like throwing down an Aurora ult on someone. But when you're coming to later stages of the game, you know, it, it's not going to be that easy. I think just like walk up an Aurora ult someone and have that be the go button for the fight because you're still going to have to walk past this edge one. walk past the Nar, walk past the Nautilus, uh, which is really a big concern for me. Uh, the Braum feels kind of very disjointed from what the rest of the draft wants to do, you know, unless they're just seeing it as like, okay, our three members on the top side are going to dive in the back line and, and kill off Supa. And then and it's like, who, who are you diving on, right? For Gam, like Gam can only go for Supa. That's basically your only target, right? Like you have one target on the team and it's a champion that can go invisible later in the game, can alt in away from your dive, you know, like it feels very, very difficult to pull off. So we'll see, you know, if Gam can make some magic happen here. I think MDK massively favored after the draft. I agree. Yeah. I think there it's just a hope and pray for Gam that you can find those small windows That's of opportunity. That's the draft strategy. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Is hope and pray. pray. <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> hey, man. Look, I'm trying to make it sound a bit better, right? The this, is, and this is their work. tournament lives here. They need this That to makes work. it sound worse. You didn't even give a real strategy. You're like, well, I think no, the strategy is No, just take the shovel away from pray. me. You take the shovel away. <laughs> 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 oh my god. Well, we'll see. We'll see if they can make it happen. I do think there is potential for them to definitely get prio in lanes and, you know, maybe you can just get ahead and then nothing else matters. You know, you definitely can erase competence additional advantages with just better play or with, <clears throat> you know, large gold advantages. So we'll see. But it's harder to get ahead in lanes with lane swaps being a thing. And you can see right here with Supa up in the top side, that's exactly what MDK are planning as Gamma are gonna do a delayed invade, but they do it right over top of a ward. So MDK are gonna have knowledge about this. Yeah, and I mean, I, th I think this is really smart, honestly, from MDK. Uh, you just are setting yourself up for success. You know, you're playing against the Callista Braum. Nautilus can never engage in the early game into that kind of a lane. Uh, so you are gonna be really on the back foot. And traditionally, Aurora is considered a pretty heavy lane bully in the early levels in a lot of these matchups. So you're denying the strength of two of the lanes here that Gam have picked. You have much better scaling. You know, you have a much easier to execute composition. So uh, MDK just kind of needs to play it simple, play it slow. Yeah, just going to start the slow push. They hovered on the way for quite a while on top side. Didn't start it off immediately, waiting for Easy Love and Helio to appear on this bottom side of the map. So at least information is there for both sides but you knew with nautilus on the mid wave that this was already going to be a um a lane swap scenario anyway it just means that mirwin hasn't stacked up any of his rage which is traditionally where we see this tp come through now with a nar available nar, mega nar available from here alvaro trying to make his way down to the tier one turret level two he's got the dredge line to make his way they're a little bit faster he is 1v4. He flashes forward to try to lock up Elio for the last turret shot, but it ain't gonna work. Levi's gonna take an extra little bit of damage here too. Mirwin arrives, but it's not worth a whole lot. He's still pretty low. He tries to jump back over. They tank the turret beautifully with Kiaya. Gam has three men at death's door, but it's MDK who lose two. And that's why I was so confused watching the MDK on top side, because they didn't start hitting the wave. Mirwin didn't start hitting the wave, and it meant that they've only now got that wave crashed. Mirwin does come in level two, but doesn't have the Mega Nar, and he's so squishy, and now mid, Emo flashes away, and he's fine, but big whoopsie on the bottom side. I mean, it's huge. And also, as you're saying, you know, not only you're not pushing to kind of get that faster XP, but also because you slow push, Kiaya after the dive goes top and he collects yeah. almost the entire wave. There's like two full waves up there for him to collect. So he gets a kill and he's going to be able to get the additional experience off this. The TP comes through here pretty late. Alvaro tries to flash forward and root in the Braum to be able to get a kill with the tower, but with the E up, he's able to survive. And then yes, Levi is low, but Kiaya is full, Easy Love is full, so they can just juggle the aggro here. Kiaya is just going to pull threat with that auto, step out, and they're able to easy pile in here, grab a couple kills. Kiaya gets the farm on top side, so not only kill and assist, but he is up, you know, a good wave and a half already. Absolute disaster for MDK in the bottom lane. 
in the lane swap that they initiated. Now everything seems to be going back to where you would expect it to be. But Gam with a one and a half thousand gold lead here early with this composition that we pretty much said needs to be ahead early because it feels so much less cohesive than what MDK has drafted. It's exactly what Gam needed. But especially because Gaia now just kind of gets to bully out in that top side of the map. Already has the amplifying tome advantage, but he's going to have the range advantage too, level advantage. He continuously pushes in, gets turret plates. He becomes a massive threat on a side lane. As long as Mirwin is in this mini nar form, you can see how aggressive Gaia just gets to play up, and that's going to open up so many opportunities for Gam, not only in just that lane, but being able to transition Gaia around the map, being able to look and fish for these roams off of side lanes for that big ultimate that we were talking about for Gaia. Levi popping the Scryer plant there to see El Yoya, who is trying to make sure that Mirwin doesn't get dove here. I mean, if, with this wave crashing into the turret, if Mirwin would have got dove, that's just kind of the end of the yeah, game for him. So you got to make sure you're shadowing that. Got to make sure you're keeping the guy protected. Alvaro. Oh, he missed. Oh, he missed the dredge line onto the terrain. Alvaro does not have flash either. He already used it in the bottom lane. Oh, Dive. That's, what is going on? We started off this series so incredibly well for MDK, but it's gone from disaster to disaster. This entire Entire game long. Yeah, I mean, that is rough. You know, he's just straight up missed the wall. Wasn't even close to the wall, to be honest. You know, he was oh. trying to go for that max range hook where you just lollipop onto the wall and, and really pull away. But I don't even think he had to. Any sort of decent hook, and I think he's probably going to be able to, to at, at the very least, force flashes to be able to chase in and get that kill. It's also, you don't really lollipop when you're hooking, or lollipop, sorry, when you hook, hook onto the walls. It's the center, if you have the, the animation it, yeah. up. Yeah, it's basically the straight line in the middle of the hit marker that actually attaches to the wall. It's the outside ones that attach onto the champions, so it was always going to be a pretty difficult one to go for. So. Yeah. And now again, bot lane further behind, more control here for easy love, a 700 gold in both top and mid. I'm sorry, in boss and mid top. Yeah. And now you just move over towards all these objectives that are just waiting to be picked up by I mean, now. it's over 2,000 gold down at six minutes. Like that is that is definitely crazy, and MDK definitely going to need to use every little bit of their compositional advantage. Now, this could be a good start, though, as easy love has an idea that something could be going on, but gonna get the bad news. Nice, dredge line finds him, MDK. They at least force the flash out of the AD carry for Gam, but now Elio's no made flash. his way down as well. There is no flash on this support. He is gonna die again. Elio gets it. They charm up Supa, but he's ready to try to get away. Frescawi's joined the fight and he goes in for the fate seal. They get one back. MDK is on the board, makes it an even trade. And Gam still coming out though on top uh -oh. because look at top lane. Mirwin about to fall. Eva's yeah. gonna finish him off. Miru! Miru with flash. the flash out, man. You're dead to rights. Uh, you can look at Kiai in the player cam. This man is very happy. Leva is very happy. And I think for Gam, this is exactly what we're talking about. You can never underestimate the VCS coming into these international tournaments. Top Esports paid the price. Fnatic paid the price. And now it might be MDK paying that one as well. Yeah, they've dug themselves a pretty big hole and they're going to have to dig out of it. Do you think a smart lane assignment's here from Gam as Emo pushes out bot while Easy Loves runs back towards mid to catch that wave. So not missing a beat on the map. They've got nearly three plates down in the bot side. They got two plates top. They redove Mirwin, got his flash. And it's 15 CS on the NAR at seven and a half minutes into the game. Levi, along with getting that kill up in the top lane, also got three grubs. And this gold lead is about the gold lead that we saw last game post 30 minutes after the Baron was taken. The support is 500 gold advantage. <laughs> Everything is just going wrong for MDK right now. But Alvaro has more CS. Got him. Plus three. Yeah. Four. Four. We got yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. All right, MDK has got to try to stabilize. I normally say you want to staunch the bleeding, but they're walking around with one leg at this point. We need a tourniquet, boys. Got to reattach the leg. Yeah, that we, we got to do something because MDK's early game has gone about as poorly as it could possibly go, and Gam are capitalizing. Kiaya now getting jumped on by Mirwin, who does have the Mega Nar. The weirding, though, going to force him back. Levi can't get in there just yet. Mirwin still getting away for now. Levi not having the range there on the Paranoia ends up being the saving grace for Mirwin, who can make it back to the Tier 1 turret. Still a good ulti from Levi, because it actually pushes Mirwin back, because I think he could have potentially had that solo kill in this position. And now Elioia has to cover. The ulti is coming back up here for Kiaia, but they're not looking for this dive. So Mirwin, good bit of pressure. He forces out the Nocturne ulti. These are the little things you need to constantly do this game. Chip yeah. away at the advantage that Gam has. Stay calm. Don't allow the lead to extend. Just try to keep it at this point. Yes, 3K is a big lead, but if it's 3K at 20 minutes, that's totally playable. That's yeah. a situation where you can show up to a team fight and just out-execute. So they just need to make sure, you know what? 
we made some mistakes in the early game. Let's calm down, take a deep breath, play for the waves, play for vision. Don't allow Gam to get more advantages. Closest lane comparison right now is in mid. Briscoe doing a good job, just pretty much staying neck and neck with this enemy mid laner with his Yone. Five to one overall the score for Gam. Kills spread out uh, pretty evenly, quite honestly. The only one without a kill being Emo in the mid lane. Doubled up there for easy love. Four out of five kill participation on him does feel pretty bad for the side of MDK, but uh, Kalista not one of those hyperscaling AD carries, so it means that Gam, like you're already talking about, Isaac, is going to need to keep the pressure on and utilize the early power of this champion. And I think that's where they want to try and just move in towards this mid lane, get push for Emo so we can start to roam alongside Levi, because then you open up for potential dives down towards Super, or at least forcing him off of Terror, he's looking at Dragon takes as well, yeah. and just playing off the fact that Ari has so much control over this lane against the Yoni. And they need to play for every single objective, right? You need to say, okay, MDK, you don't want to fight us now? Guess what? We take every neutral on the map. We play for six scrubs. We stack dragons. We threaten soul. And we try to put you in a position where you can't just AFK farm until you're in a good spot with your comp and you can then try to fight. And that's why I think the fact that the resets have already come through for MDK are pretty clutch. 15 seconds until the next Void Grubs. First item completion for El Yoya. But maybe they can try and find something back here, but yeah. already Mirren on this bottom half of the map, they're starting to push out a little bit, but all five members of Gamma are in position. I mean, Gamma have a big advantage, but they have zero completed items, so the gold is not as, as big of a deal as it would be. Exactly. That's the power of playing a tank jungler. You can buy these lower price point support items. You can get something like Convergence, and even though Levi's ahead, he hasn't been able to put it together. Yaya hasn't reset. He's been hiding off of Vision this entire time, looking for the Kai'Sa on the backside. Alvaro gets charmed up. Going to take a little bit of damage here from Emo and Elio. Fourth Grub already secured by Gam. Elioya and Alvaro still thinking about maybe making their entry into the top side. River, fifth Grub goes over to Gam. Smite still available for Levi. Smites that one down. All six Grubs, no fight from MDK. Yeah, at the very least, they didn't fully overcommit because Mirwin was getting plates in bot side. He got the push in. You know, he's closed that CS gap quite a bit. You know, he was down. 15 CS, you know, only a couple minutes ago. So he's actually getting some farm. You know, he's closing that gold lead a little bit. Yes, they couldn't get in and actually stop any of the grubs, but I do think MDK didn't overcommit because that would have been really tragic if they just sent all five members there and couldn't get anything. And I think that's why it was good positioning from Kiaya, not resetting, mm -hmm. keeping pressure on towards Super. So Super couldn't really enter the fight. And from that position for Scout, he still had to control the mid wave. And I think that's why now having this six void grubs is going to work out brilliantly for Gam. They're going to have the pressure from Emo who can continue to push, chip away at turrets using that burn and that buff. And same for Kiaya, who, look, even though Mirren's still got a bit of gold, it's still a 1.3k gold lead. lead yeah. It's still huge. Yeah. Rescowie, being smart here, was walking forward, seeing if there's an angle for a plate. You can use the soul inbound for that, of course. But Ilio up towards top side, going to help Emo get a reset here, who should be sitting on a lot of gold, honestly. Yeah, he's sitting on 1,700 gold at this point in pocket on the Ari. So once to help him get this reset, is going to be able to do just that. And Kiaya, you can see that he's going to be trailed by Levi down on this bottom side. So they are going to look to continue attacking Mirwin, who has been chunked out a little bit. And Mega is nowhere in sight. So if he does overextend, it definitely could be an easy kill there. Okay, so we're talking about MDK needing to stop the game from continuing to snowball against them. And for the past few minutes, it seems like they're doing an okay job at it. The gold lead that peaked at around 3K is still at 2.7 or so, but it's not like it's growing. The clock keeps marching forward. Yes, you're down six grubs, but the gold's not bleeding. But that's why I think MDK are playing so heavily down towards this bottom side. It's if you get a pick on Kiaya, you get the crash that wave, you get your resets mid until the uh, Rift Herald, you're in a great position then on the map as they have to catch up. But MDK swinging a miss on yep. the ultimate from Oyoya. They just want to try and keep these plays up while they have that timing window. Yeah, and I think they, what they were trying to do was similar to what they did in the first game. You know, even if you don't get a kill there, you're hoping you force cleanse. You're hoping you force flash, but Alyoya might have to flash himself. No, he's going to be okay. No. They didn't continue the trace. Um, but, you know, I don't think we've seen a single Void Grub spawn until just now as Kiai is going to be able to actually get towards that bottom side. They hadn't been able to get access to the towers, but now with Kiai hitting that bot lane tower, they showed mid. So now this tower is pretty much just gone. Levi's in the area. It's going to be very tough for Mirwin to defend this. And that's why I think, um, yes, they could move up towards the Rift Herald, but the fact that you've got TPO Mirwin still maybe putting a little bit of uh, anxiety in their step as they don't want to fully get play into a 4v5 with the TP advantage for MDK. But I think for Gam, you're happy as long as you can keep the wave shoved in. Oh, Ooh, nice use of the Glacial Fissure there, but it ain't going to be enough. MDK in the 2v2 getting a kill for themselves, finally striking back against Gam. But all the meanwhile, bottom lane, they get that tier one turret for Kiaya.
Yeah, Ilio has been really haphazard with his Braum shield. So, like, he's been jumping in and just denying Qs for last hits on minions and things like this. And in this situation, it was a great buffer. So we're going to see Supa. Oh, easy love. He's taken down Supa. Flexing those muscles, stepping up when he absolutely needs to, getting another kill for MDK. Big step up for the MDK bot lane. First the kill, and then Supa seeing his moment to get that pick. Desperate gold needed for MDK and some control on the map as well. But Gam, back out onto it, looking at this Rift Herald. All right, Alvaro getting back away here as Oyoya secures the next blue buff for himself. Elio and Levi both continuing to move forward, sit down some vision a little bit. Now rotate back over to the mid lane to take out this tier one turret. Remember, the plates are gone. A demolished proc is going to do some good damage. Elioya scoots in just in time to try to keep the turret protected, but the burn will take it anyway. Now Paranoia's popped off, and it looks like Alvaro could be in some trouble. The Fear Tether procs, they're trying to save him with the Glacial Prison, but it won't matter. Kiaya gets the kill on Alvaro, and now with a 5v4 and Rift Herald alive, it's control over the top side of the map for Gam. Oh, There's no. the though. Kiaya going between worlds. Supa gets caught for a second. The weirding still hits him. A little bit more damage is all it takes, and Kiaya gets the kill. Nearly dies, but close ain't good enough. Easy love getting away from Mirwin in the bottom lane. Meanwhile, the 2v2, 3v2 back in the mid lane. Frescawi trying to reset his position. The fate seal ain't going to work. He goes unstoppable, but does he have the damage? No, he doesn't. It's more kills for Gam. It's more tragedy for MDK. Gam coming up massive in these fights here. First to pick on Alvaro, but then MDK decide they want to try to get something back. They're looking for these scraps when they're not in the position to do so, and they lose so much more, erasing all the good work from their bot lane there in that mid lane 2v2, where, you know, Easy Love could have just altered his bomb to safety, didn't do it, they get a kill there. Then he oversteps, Super gets a great solo kill on him, but they have got to be cognizant of their spot in this game. This got really close because the two-fold hex, that Q, first one missed. So Supa almost able to do it, but then the TP in to try to get something more from Vraskawi is just way too far. And you've got so many members of GAM that are just able to collapse. Supa can't really be a part of this. So for him, or sorry, uh, the Aurora can't really be a part of this, but there's still enough members there on GAM to just finish them off. And you can see the frustration in the back. Yeah. And the whole start of this was bizarre from MDK as well, because the call was already there. Hey, we're going to take bot lane turret and give Rift Herald. But Alvaro takes a step too far forward. He gets caught. Then Supa overextends on the mid wave as well. It's just these small errors that are being punished by Gam extraordinarily well. OK, so for MDK, they have finally claimed their first neutral objective of the game. They did get the Rift Herald. It is traded away for the second Drake going into the possession of Gam. They're up 2 to nothing on those, 6 to nothing on the Void Grubs, 8 to 3 in kills, 2 to 1 in turrets, 4,000 gold lead. It's just about 17 minutes into the game. How are we feeling about, is this enough? for GAM when we were talking about MDK needing to slow things down and scale. Honestly, I think it's more than enough for now. You know, you're, you're a 4,000 gold lead here. You have six scrubs. You have two dragons. You're about to extend that gold lead even more. So I feel like compositional advantages don't really matter at all with this sort of a lead. So okay. MDK are going to have to find some way to slow the pace of this game. Thankfully for them, it's Chemtech Soul, which is largely really useless for a lot of the champs on the GAM side. So that is a little bit of a feather in the cap there. You know, Aurora, Ari, they're going to get like zero from that almost. Um, but that being said, a soul is still a soul and is combat power. Uh, but MDK got to be really happy that's not like, a, you know, a hex tech or something like that. And the fact that GAM do have a very squishy lineup can still play a factor if MDK can find a pick or can overextend because I think that's the way that they really get back into this game like the wave and the push is still in favor of GAM because they have multiple of these range and um, carries but if you overextend like here for example if Yoya could find a big ultimate on towards easy love suddenly that slows that pace down and buys that time you need all right Ripkeld summoned up in the mid lane MDK trying to make a play for the tier one turret Mirwin with a flash out does not want to be caught there with the last hit the winner's bite as Emo and Levi jump in, but Levi might just get punished. A beautiful Glacial Fissure trying to keep the jungle alive. Levi barely surviving a little bit more damage from the Glacial Prison. Just might kill him off, but Mikiai is already on a rampage. Frescawi is down. Levi and Elio going to be traded, though, as now it's dead bodies on both sides. Three dead for MDK. It's about to be four. Mirwan wants to fight back, but a little bit more damage as the spears start flying and the lions start dying. It's a triple for the Aurora, for Kiaya, for Gam. The Gam 
Phantom shots are flying and they are finding their mark. MDK thought they could push in onto that mid lane turf, but Gam immediately saw their chance. The TP from Emo, the flight in from Levi, even Kiaia getting access to Fresco in that back line. It was a wonderful setup for Gam. Yeah, and it's all about this initial engage. First, Kaui, I think, was trying to find some sort of an angle for a flank, but he's way too far up, so he has to use a Fated Seal just to run. Then the Soul Unbound is used in a spot where you're kind of guaranteed to never get away. So you're using all your tools there as the Yone to be able to get really nothing. So it became so difficult for MDK. There's obviously the focus on Supa. The rest of the members burst him down. Kiaia finishes off Frescaui. Mirwin, who had to flash earlier when the Herald crashed, has no way out. And this is just massive for Gam, feeling so good about their spot in the game now. And you can see a little bit of relief now on the coaches' faces as they're starting to look a little bit stressed, less stressed. Yeah, but then the camera shot immediately after, you can mm -hmm. see the stress, you can see the pressure setting in for MDK. Things are getting further and further out of their control now with over a 5,500 gold lead for Gam. I mean, just, just look at the items. You're comparing the top top lane items here on both sides. You're comparing the mid lane items on both sides. The gap is massive. Supa is still strong, but it's the soul laners that are going to be such an issue here oh between boy. these two squads. Hold on now. He tries to get away, but Mirwin is still caught. The fear tether still finds its mark, and a Glacial Fissure looking for two more. Demo. As Gam are not yet done. A charm immediately forcing out the cleanse from Supa. Gam will not get an additional kill on top of the pick they find on Mirwin, but they force out some summoners, they force MDK back out of their own side of the blue jungle. And when their tournament lives are on the line, you're seeing that experience, that veterancy on this world stage step up for Gam. Kiaia doing amazing, Levi following up so well. They're picking off these members of MDK who now have to try and find some sort of success here in this game, but Gam are butchering them where they stand. Yeah, it's tough. You know, you can see first guy who is pushing through bot side, doesn't have the confidence to stay around and try to actually finish off that tower. And now they're looking for Supa, who has no cleanse. All right, that was a little out of control there for Gam. They're way committing to try to find the kill on Supa. Instead, Elio now going to be punished. He'll be killed off. El Yoya's down to 100 HP, but he ain't dead yet. Easy Love trying to get back away from Frescawi. He goes in for the Fade Sealed. He goes too far. The turret shot will not be enough to kill him. A beautiful shot down coming out for Mirwin. Easy Love's looking to grab one back. Mirwin at 100 Kiaia. HP. Kiaia has made his way into the fight now as Alvaro tries to lock down Easy Love. Soup has been killed by Easy Love. Just when it looked like MDK might have got something, it ends up trading even. And hasn't that been the story this game? Every time MDK try and set up, there is a brick wall in Gam waiting for them, saying you will not go further. This is the end for you. And Gam turn over towards a dragon as just another cherry on top. It's a good little punish on the initial play, though, as Elio was kind of going too far. They're overextending, trying to take off Supa, and MDK have to look for these small moments. Supa has been so big for the team. They nail this ultimate here onto Levi. They put a lot of pressure on him. They get the kill on the Braum, but it's just the gold difference in action here. As MDK push forward, they're trying to put this pressure here onto Easy Love. Kiaia has zoned out. Levi's not really a part of the play. It's only the flash that keeps Easy Love alive, and all of this focus here onto Emo buys Easy Love the time to try to turn it around and to set up for the re-engage here from Kiaia. If that boomerang had landed, maybe that's something, but Gam still coming out on top. And now with the setup available, it's Dra Dragon Soul available them for four and a half minutes. The push on sides, the Baron still sitting there, and MDK just keep getting picked apart. A tale of 280 carries in the team fight damage right there. 4,000 from Supa, 6,000 from Easy Love. And I feel like when you look at the scoreboard itself, MDK's only chance is this marksman. It is this player that you're talking about was what they were focusing on back during their wins in play-ins. If Supa can't do it, nobody can. Alvaro now might be caught out as Gam again hard forced their way into the jungle of MDK for yet another kill on Alvaro. Well, this is so problematic because they spent nothing to get that kill. So now they're going to be able to start the Baron. They still have all their tools to turn here. Aurora ult is available. So is Nocturne ult. So is Ariel. Mirwin has the Narbar. He's ready to go in. Everybody is stuck in the pit. Gam going across worlds to try to find their way into the fight now. But Elio's already almost dead. Levi jumping into the back. Looking to kill Supa, but he ain't going to find enough damage here just yet. Mirwin still taking a ton as Easy Love goes in. 
the rampage. Now El Yoya is going to try to get away, but Levi's ready to flash over the wall to slow him down. The fear is here. Goodbye, Sejuani. Another kill for Easy Love. Gam don't lose a single man. Alvaro's back alive, but all five Gam players are still here. They are still in the topside river, and they are still looking at Baron. And that's the thing. Gam get pushed off, but they just go right back to it after the kills. Alvaro, hook goes wide. Super trying to come in. Frescoe, no ultimus. Emo, running interference. Baron down to about 4,000. They've also got a Kalista. It should be an easy secure. It's going to be secured by Levi. But what about the fight? frescoe has got the chance to go huge here, but he ain't going to find it. Another death for Alvaro. Everybody on Gam still alive, and Baron in their possession. And Gam have all the tools they need now to close out this series to keep their world's dream alive here. Nearly 10,000 gold ahead. Here was the initial turn. Good job by Super surviving against Levi and Emo, but it just doesn't matter because there's not enough damage in the tank on the other side. Frescawi, it's really all up to him in this spot, but he just couldn't find the angle, couldn't find the opportunity to get in there and really turn something around on Gam. Yeah, and I think Shadow to Super, he is doing his damnedest this game to try and claw this back. He is having the best game he possibly can, but Gam just will not let up. Again, this Nocturne threat, catching out Alvaro, consistently paying off this Aurora. And it's a very similar comp that we saw from Gen G, and I wasn't sure Gam would be able to find the success with this, but they've been playing so well around this early lead that they managed to gain. I mean, just how damn good is Kiaya? This guy Hell has yeah. really yeah, been impressing insane. me. You know, I, I do think sometimes when you come to these leagues that have the, the smaller regions, right, you know, people are just overlooking these players and saying, oh, he's good, but he's probably good for that league. Kiaya is just straight good. This guy is incredible. He's playing at an enormously high level, and you can see that win probability powered by AWS. That is... It's just a hair's breadth away from 100%. Yeah. I saw you squinting, Jack, <laughs> trying to see how he's much. Looking, he's like, so you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> yeah. He's got the microscope. Yeah. Let me double check. Well, All we'll right. see if MDK can find that slim opportunity. Gentlemen, we've got a 7-0 and 8 Aurora. We've got a 7-2 and 7 Callista on the side of Gam. We've still got 80 seconds left on the Baron. Plus 2,000 gold on that already. And the soul will spawn right before the Baron dissipates. So Gam should have total control over Summoner's Rift for the entirety of the timer leading up to it. They're shoving down the bottom lane now. They're pushing towards the tier three turret in the bottom lane. They're just gonna give it, Mirwin's not coming. Yeah, Mirwin not there. He's just trying to get something back at the tier two. Frescawi going in from an ulti. The turret's probably gonna die before the TP even completes. They're going between worlds. Levi diving into the back. If they find Super, the game's gonna be over right there. And immediately. Emo jumps in. Easy Love is dominating. Three dead on MDK. The final fight will not even be one. Gam just run him over. The TP to guarantee the minions stay alive. Mirwin and El Yoya will try as valiantly as they might to defend, but the turrets are already gone. Vietnam still has some fight left in them, and they will eliminate MDK from World. 2024 and what a story here for the gam team qualifying for the swiss stage taking down mdk in a best of three this is massive in levi's final worlds the major region the assassins always come to play it's another head on a pike for them and they are looking at several more as this tournament goes on an impressive showing from Gam to bounce back after that first game. The desk is standing by. Tell us what y'all think of that series. It's crushing for the side. It's crushing for the side of Mad Lions, Koi and El Yoya after having to fight up against no one believing them for the entire year. They showed them wrong, but eventually it wasn't enough to beat the might that was Kiyaya and Levi and Gam in this series. After what was a promising start and the mental went kind of back and forth, but a couple of key picks, a couple of key moves, and we've said it so, so many times, Kobe, but that top side of Gam is no joke. Kiyaya was magnificent. They got the Aurora, they even gave away Yone, and in the face of the stats, they took him <laughs> down. Honestly, as well, we were recommending lane swapping to Mad Lions yeah. as a means of actually putting Kiaya behind, wow. but they were so late on their teleport from Merwin on the yeah. bottom side that actually just fed two kills, and Gam blasted them in their own lane swap to get 